Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dor, and if you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to me here on YouTube for more Enneagram related content. Now it's time to talk about Enneagram 2, and the Enneagram 2 fits really well into the Jungian archetype called the caregiver. Now often what I find with the Enneagram 2 type is that it's not just a kind type. A lot of people think, oh, it's kind. That's the thing about it. So uh, they're thinking if they're kind, there must be a 2. There is the 2 that drives kindness. That's not necessarily true. The 2 has a very distinct kindness and a very distinct strategy of dealing with people and emotions and with managing people overall. Now what you'll want to note is that the Enneagram 2 type comes from a point of care from other people. They're involved with other people's lives, they're involved with other people's feelings, often they're involved with other people's awareness of the situation. What other people tell them is often the truth. What other people say is often the reality of this type. This type is very susceptible, receptive to other people's feelings and emotions. And the uh, Enneagram 2 type is very preoccupied with these emotional needs and with these values and with these opinions. So they're often very bound by what other people tell them, what other people share with them. Now the Enneagram 2 type comes from a point of centeredness in that they know what they want to give to other people. They know how to help other people. They feel very strongly what other people need to do to be happy. They have strong ideals for how people can grow and what other people can do to become happier, to become healthier and to get through issues in life. The Enneagram 2 type is a person that wants to infer their own personal ideas on what's right and wrong to help guide other people towards a better life. So the Enneagram 2 type has a strong opinion on how people should live, how people should act, what other people can do to be happy. And the Enneagram 2 is stressed out by the fact that other people won't follow this advice. They're helping people, they're supporting other people, but other people aren't listening to them. Other people aren't taking their advice seriously. They see people over and over do things that go against their better judgment, and that's the feeling. The Enneagram 2 type feels that they have a better judgment, and other people struggle with often this feeling, this idea that the Enneagram 2 type has a better judgment, that the Enneagram 2 type knows best, that the Enneagram 2 type is a father knows best type, in a sense. Now, that's often the core cause of drama and tension for the Enneagram 2 type, when other people dislike that role that the Enneagram 2 type tends to take. When other people start asking questions, why is that person always leading? Why is that person always taking care of everyone? Why is that person always uh, getting to be on the higher ground? And that feeling of inferiority, of feeling like you are on the lower ground, the feeling that you are struggling and that person is always on top. Uh, that that person is always better than you, that that or, or person always knows better than you. And often people are drawn to the two for this while they are also put off by it. They come to the two seeking guidance and help and judgment. They come to the two seeking that center, that stability that the two offers as well as the passion of the two and the strong judgment of the two. But they also feel put off by it because they want to develop, and this is often a necessary step in the relationship, their own judgment, their own opinion on what is good and what's bad, and their ability to decide for themselves what they want. Now often I feel like we see this struggle in the parent. It's common to see the parent as the role of the caregiver. And that's in part because it's so important in today's society that the parent is a caregiver. We tend to expect the parent to be a caregiver. We see... A good mom is a two. We see a good mom as a host, a person that is always accommodating and putting others' needs before themselves. Yes, the two often puts other people's needs first. That's the one of the core things about them. They put and invest energy in other people, and then they feel disappointed when that energy is not used for the good. They are often giving off and sharing their energy in a way that exhausts them, that drains them, and they can often feel drained in relationships. A common core struggle for two is that feeling of feeling used, feeling drained, feeling that other people are sucking away your energy and that you're getting nothing back, that you're always being the helper, that you're always putting yourself out there for others, and that other people aren't giving you anything for it. Yes, it's often it's not necessarily that I hear two saying they want to be complimented, it's that they are wanting, they're seeking energy. They're seeking 
people that will share and that people that will put and give the same effort, the same care. But often I feel there is such a strong standard on kind people not to accept kindness from other people. The two is often struggling with rejecting other people's kindness, out of feeling that they have to be the kindest. Yes, sometimes the two is a little stuck in this role of being the good guy, being the good person, being the best person. And that's often the thing that can happen, the struggle that can happen when other people are trying to help the two in return. That the two says, oh, I don't need it, but thank you. Oh, that's okay. That the two is often kind of reflecting that energy that other people are trying to give them. And that they're often putting it off. They're kind of putting this aura of not needing it. Yeah, I don't need your energy. I'm happy. I don't need it. I'm good. I'm... Uh, oh, don't put your energy on me. Don't waste it on me. I don't need it. And the two uh, can often deflect in often putting all attention on the other person. I see this in eights as well to some extent. But twos do it the most. Twos put all attention on the other person. So how are you doing? So are you okay? So do you need anything? And yeah, sometimes they hope that other people will ask that question back. But often it's the aura of the two. That aura of um, that, that kind of gives other people the idea that the two has no issue. The two is perfect. The two is always good. The per two is always kind. The two is always giving. And the people don't even notice that the two is struggling because... They are so used to this dual attention, all the attention, the two is putting all attention on the other person and the other person is also putting all attention on themselves. The two is so skilled at using their judgment and their control to kind of put everyone and their, everyone's attention somewhere else but on them. And that's, a, that's something the two has to confront. Why am I afraid of other people seeing me? Why am I afraid of other people seeing my struggles? Why am I afraid of seeing other, showing other people my issues? Vulnerability. What is that? Uh, being human. Often that's perhaps the key to the Enneagram, learning to be human. All Enneagram types struggle with it. All Enneagram types feel that they can't be human, that they can't be themselves, that they have to put something before themselves, that they have to be something they're not. So too, what are you trying to be? What are you trying to do? What are you forcing yourself into that you don't need? Yeah, often something I tell parents is you can be a good parent and you can still pursue your own interest. And that's the challenge of a lot of caregivers as well as parents that ability to help other people through your passion and through your hobbies rather than at the expense of them. Thank you all for watching and if you like this video leave a like, share and subscribe and leave a comment down below for more Enneagram related content.